Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearance video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another one here. This one actually comes from a page that has a list of disappearances throughout the decades. And when I was reading this entry, it provided so much information to share, especially when it comes to a prime suspect. It kind of makes you scratch your head like how, in this case, there hasn't been any resolution to this missing person case and it has to involve unfortunately the tragedy of a missing toddler or missing baby as well this is something that was in the Australian area there back in the 80s and it was to this day still remains one of the most infamous unsolved cases there even having its own moniker and it has to do with this looking at it now uh, the picture of the mother and the toddler it's known as the Louisa and Charmaine Faulkner disappearance Although uh, in the media there, it's also known as the St. Kilda Mum Mystery. So let's go ahead let's talk about all the information associated with this tragedy, including the prime suspect that to this day uh, still remains the person most favored towards causing the disappearance. So who was, in this case, the mom and the toddler, Luis Faulkner and then Charmaine Faulkner? Well... There were a mother and daughter that lived there in, this case, Victoria, Australia, at the time of their disappearance. Louise, though, was someone that she was born in April 1937, and at the time of her disappearance was going through, I guess you call it like a um, domestic, uh, domestic relationship trouble. Uh, within her life. Here's how it happened. Uh, throughout her 50s, uh, she grew up there in Melbourne, eventually entering into the workforce, and there she met a guy named Barry Clark, and she ended up marrying him about a year later. Cut to about a little another year after that, and she came across a man who went by the first name George. Now, um, for protection purposes, since he hasn't been found guilty with regards to anything associated with this case, I don't know exactly if I can mention the whole name, but I'll include the link below. If you wanted to check it out, you'll see the information there. But yes, this guy George was someone who uh, would later have a big impact in her life. But this was the first time that she met him, and then she was able to then um, uh, afterward just continue on with her normal life. And eventually, she had three children children with her husband but 12 years later things were looked like they were going on the rocks well if people describe Luis as being someone that was very caring very warm very kind hearted uh, kind hearted uh, obviously somebody that you could just talk to and essentially know that you're dealing with a very friendly person but then others kind of knew a little bit more about her apparently she was very flirtatious and then also was involved in several outside affairs now some of these uh, info like I don't know how concrete this stuff is but at least that's according to what uh, people have stated this is how she was and it may be tied again to her marriage and then the dissolution of it well during that very same time period she actually actually came across that that guy I was mentioning earlier George as well apparently he uh, started employing her at an auctioneering firm and it was there that they finally I guess were able to have a uh, an affair and I don't know if necessarily they were having the affair before about 12 years earlier but now they were George was described as somebody that was a little bit more senior than her at the time she was I think like in her late 30s or so but he was already nearing his 60s so he was someone that was obviously just a little a uh, little bit older than her he was married she was married to and both of their affairs essentially ended up causing their divorces so finally Luis's husband left her he was able to keep the children and then also um, uh, uh, George's wife left him although interestingly enough they ended up getting back together later on more info on that here in a minute so yes for a little bit they were together uh, Luis and this guy George after their affair they were known to travel throughout various parts there of Australia uh, she would even move in I think it was closer to a flat or a location there 
close to him and then uh, she was able to collect some kind of social security payments it was because while she was growing up she had some disabilities uh, physically when it came to her body so um, she was able to then start living off of those and she was also relying on this guy George the guy she had the affair with for uh, other stuff as well cut to about a year after that and then she had a child apparently she had a child that to this day it still remains a mystery as to who the father was the presumed father was in this case the guy George but he has flatly denied it like he has never stated that he has been the father of this child this was the one that was missing Charmaine later on uh, nor has he uh, like ever like signed any kind of birth certificate or anything along those lines not that I know of but but I didn't know exactly who signed it there but interestingly enough, he was able to visit the hospital during that time and he was able to provide some kind of gift, something along those lines involving um, uh, her essentially being uh, taken care of in some way. And then when she got out, she was living in another area uh, shortly before her disappearance and she was known to still travel with this guy George her and her child her newborn child uh, traveling with him so, um, interestingly though her husband I'm saying George's ex-wife ended up going back with him during this same time period that he was having this continued relationship with Luis so that was very very uh, unique to find out because apparently they he went through that same divorce process that Luis did but his ex-wife soon became his de facto wife they didn't remarry afterward again, but essentially they were still living together uh, at that time too. And this is where things take a very, very special turn. He was as a farmer. He had a huge farm, a potato farm, in fact, that he would use, I guess, to make his living, uh, something along those lines. And she would, uh, Luis would always be excited to be able to go there, um, I guess, to be to do to do something. I guess either live there temporarily or be picked up and be traveling to that location so all that stuff eventually came to a head back in April 25th 1980 it was known as Anzac Day there in Australia during that time period where the where Louise lived again a place where she would normally get picked up by George and then they would go out she had to do this because she was someone that didn't have any driver's license didn't even have a car so she totally relied on George to to, to take care of her her during these type of trips well she was expecting yet another pickup and during that time period she developed a friendship with a neighbor in the same block a lady by the name of Corrine Wild and it was during that fateful day April 25th 1980 that Luis was outside talking with Corrine letting her know that she was gonna have a uh, um, uh, 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 like an event where she was gonna go and have someone pick her up they were gonna go to a farm she called him her potato farmer was essentially the person that was going to pick her up and that they were going to expect to have a good time for a good while and then Corrine was there as she saw that that this person whoever this was came about he was driving like a white van of some kind parked nearby the location of Luis Luis was there with her young toddler Charmaine and this young this this older man who came out the way that Corrine Wilde described that he was an older heavy set man like a stronger build and a, a, a older male as well um, he picked her up and then that was it he took her off with the child into another location that was the last time anybody was able to see both Luis and Charmaine Faulkner alive. So this witness, this Corrine Wild, she saw basically the last time uh, anybody did of of Luis and Charmaine Faulkner being alive. Unfortunately, though, um, as far as I can understand, Corrine Wild never heard from Luis the name of the person that was picking her up, other than the fact that she that he was a potato farmer. But that's about it. So cut to about. Uh, maybe a couple of days later and there was an investigation or somebody that was trying to start an inquiry as to what happened with um, in this case uh, Luis and Charmaine Faulkner but nothing was done interestingly enough for a good while 
the investigation did not happen for a good six weeks, which is crazy when you think about it, because normally these things have what a half life of what 24, 48 hours, somewhere along, along those lines. But no, um, however it happened, she was reported missing, but the actual disappearance, the investigation did not start for six weeks later. When they went into Luis's flat, they found several things that stood out. Number one, there was like food left on the kitchen table, almost as if, of course, like someone was going to come back, but they never did. Also, there was a TV there that was given by George to Luis that was considered missing, a large suitcase that was also supposed to be there but was considered missing, and then also Charmaine's own birth certificate was also gone too and the entire bedroom area had a bunch of things strewn about almost as if somebody was in there ransacking a lot of things and then trying to find something or finding something and then taking it away and then also there was no sign of any kind of forced entry within Luis's flat which told the police that whoever did this had special access like they obviously had a key to get in there uh, without having to break the door down break a window and anything along those lines. So once they finally did this and they did the investigation, they quickly the suspect that came about was this guy, George. And the reason why he was the main suspect was because after hearing, you know, the description and the, of the last person to have taken uh, Luis and Charmaine Faulkner away and then also interviewing other witnesses, friends that were in the life of Luis Faulkner, they came up with the notion that George was a person of considerable interest. This was also because apparently at that time they were having that affair and they were having that loose relationship afterward but even then things were kind of getting on the rocks between George and Luis because he was someone that um, that was taking her out going out to various locations but he was not providing the support that she was kind of expecting and also it seemed like because she was expecting him to be uh, the, the father for Charmaine Faulkner but he was denying it uh, there was a little bit of tension on that part too. Uh, but yes, the police interviewed him. He ultimately, of course, denied anything along those lines. He stated that he did not know her whereabouts. He was not the person that drove that white van, even though he had a white van, nor was he the person that was described as the potato farmer, even though he was a potato farmer, like he had a farm that, that, that he grew potatoes in. So, uh, but unfortunately, things kind of uh, went by the wayside because it took so long for the investigation to start. For example, there could have been a way to trace the last set of phone calls into, um, in this case, Luis's telephone number there in her flat because uh, in this case they could have seen and traced exactly who made the arrangement to pick her up. But unfortunately, because there was so much time, six weeks had passed, there was non-payments being made. Her phone line was disconnected and apparently the info tied to those records were gone. I don't know exactly how, you know, if that's 100% true, but at least that's the information that was being reported. And also, no forensics were ever taken of the flat itself. So all that stuff I was mentioning earlier, stuff being strewn about, um, it looks like someone was ransacking the place. Nobody bothered to take fingerprints and then try to match them, in this case, to this guy, George, to see if that was truly him. And then if you wanted to hear even more strange circumstances, stuff that would make you raise your eyebrows, Shortly after the report of, of of Louis and Charmaine Faulkner's disappearance, this guy George and his now ex-wife that's now living with him, they ended up selling their home there in Australia for a steep, steep discount. Like normally stuff that would make you wonder, why did they sell it so cheap? And then they ended up moving, or at least as much as they could, to to the United States. They stated they did so because there was a, um, a they had a daughter that was over there that was starting a new food store. I think it was like a brownie or muffin store, and that they were trying to help her. But they sold their home there to live, in this case, in an RV van or some type of recreational vehicle van uh, somewhere in the United States. Again, it makes you scratch your head along those lines. Not only that, but it was something that it turned out to be three years that they lived in the United States, of course, making it harder for the investigators to then try to 
interview and then try to contact this guy George afterward. He was um, actually done when he eventually he could not stay as a permanent resident in the United States, so he had to come back still as the number one suspect in the disappearance. Luis's three children, by the way, suspected him as well, um, as did many that knew Luis too and knew about the affair with George because of the discord that they were having. He almost it almost seemed like he was someone that was more interested in her like kind of like he was enjoying the fun on it but then once she had the baby it was a different story also he it was known apparently that he was trying to convince her to have an abortion before she had Charmaine Faulkner so it gives you another idea essentially of what he thought of the relationship at that time too but yes he came back into Australia and once again he was interviewed not once but twice uh, both times over several decades and he still flat out denied where he was like 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 that it was him that was in the van, that it was him that was the eyewitness. The most he stated was that he was at some hotel during the very same time of her disappearance, but apparently he was never able to provide witnesses, nor was he able to provide physical proof, receipts, anything along those lines. Makes you scratch your head, like with all that evidence going against him, why he was never formally charged. Because to this day, even now, 2017, there is nothing that shows like the police officially filing him as a uh per like the suspect in other words um they had him i think in some kind of uh testimony but um he denied it uh, under using their version of the fifth amendment to self-incriminate so he was not uh put forth into some kind of any particular court case but yes even after all this time he still remained the main person for it um the most into uh, i guess the most that people have to this day uh, there was a celebration a uh, tragic one but after 10,000 days of her missing there was supposed to be like a uh, foundation some kind of memorial that was set up but that government that was there some the, something called the Victorian State Coroner uh, they were not able to create anything there which kind of uh, made people more infuriated at what they considered obviously like a huge injustice considering so how much time she was disappeared um, her and her daughter and then also that they had a main suspect but nothing ever seemed to be along the lines of persecuting him but yes to this day um, to this very day uh, everything is still points to her uh, still nobody finding out her whereabouts Louise and Charmaine Faulkner uh, her disappearance is still as mysterious as the day that it happened the main suspect still seems to be this guy George who still lives there in Australia with his wife um, I think he was interviewed sometime in the late 2000s as well well and in it he still stated pretty much the same that it was not him he said that most likely he was the father of Charmaine but there was never any proof tying it to him only that he was stating that she was still considered very promiscuous at the time so it could have been several other men as well and I think that was the last known statement that he had of her as uh, to other than the fact that stating that he doesn't believe that she is also alive in his opinion like not that he's stating that he knows about this but in his opinion that's what he is is, is otherwise giving his statement on but if anybody has any any more information anything else that, that that could be interesting here with the disappearance the mystery of Louis and Charmaine Faulkner please post those comments below anybody know anything else that stands out that I might have missed and maybe any other suspects that happen to be outside of this guy George please post those comments I'm going to include the link below if you wanted a full recourse of the information and then I'll include another one too as well but yes it's still I guess an open case there in Australia but again, very infuriating when you think about so much circumstance basically pointing to one person, but because of the way courts work and you have to have irrefutable proof, and in this case there is nothing considered concrete, then you have to abide by what the courts can, can or can't do, essentially. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.